Well, I chose Romilly. Right. Yeah, because he said... Uh, he came to my house uh, in the suburbs and we sat under the pear tree and uh, he said, um, I'm giving you uh, this woman. Uh, he said, uh, it's a woman who works for everyone. So I had to pick somebody uh, <clears throat> that I knew who worked for, uh, for everyone. So, of course, I picked the woman over the road who, who went out uh, cleaning for people and spent all her pennies on pretty things. You know, she would wear little little handbags, funny little hats, a bunch of flowers, black, you know, frilly frocks. You know, she spent her money on that and the earrings and, and whatnot. And I chose her. So when I got onto this job and I was going into the local market, which is up in Salford and all that, I bought a pair of earrings one day because that's what she... He went mad, you see, he went mad. Because uh, she, the, the woman he'd got in his mind didn't buy pretty earrings, uh -huh. you see. And, and another thing I did, uh, went to the local market, and uh, I can remember there was a whole pile of lemons. I, like, I love lemons, and, and I buy quite a few, you know. And, so, and they were so cheap, so cheap. I thought, marvellous, I bought uh, half a dozen lemons. He went mad again. He said she would only buy one lemon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I was in dead trouble. <laughs> so I cottoned on to really the kind of woman he wanted. But this um, is a sense of, of how, for people who don't know, how he works, that you spend weeks and weeks... Yeah, months. ..in, in character, months. months, in character, yeah, improvising. I did, I did. And wearing these these wretched things and I had to walk around the streets looking like that, you know. And you say in your memoirs that um, if Mike Lee hadn't cast you, I would still be leaning on my Zimmer frame, serving in some shop. I would, I would. I'd be doing any old job to earn a copper, uh, ever since, really, all, over all those years. But uh, it was only that the fact that he uh, recognised uh, what I could do and... and, and, and promoted me and uh, and that's how it's gone, <laughs> yes. But you obviously, in, in that phrase you said about still being in a shop on the Zimmer yes. frame, you obviously think quite a lot about if, if that hadn't happened, if it hadn't worked out for yeah, you. Uh, well, what I do, it would have been uh, simply dreadful because I would never had a release from uh, doing any old job just to earn a copper because uh, th that's what I was doing, really. I'd... Just to keep going, I had two children, you see. Uh, in the beginning, they were small, and then they grew up during the time I was doing these ghastly things. Uh, but um, it would have just have continued in the same vein with me getting older and sadder and trying. I, I don't know how long I'd have gone on, you, you know, appealing for an audition here or there and, you know, not getting anywhere. He was the... Only one who recognised and and gave me the job and started me off. Oh, and after that, uh, I applied again uh, to an agent, uh, to, and I was accepted. I, I had to do a Mike Lee film before I could get an agent, <laughs> and um, they sent me off for an audition to the BBC. Uh, that Peter Tinniswood was looking for people to put in um, his sitcom. I didn't know you cared. And um, uh, they put me uh, as Mrs Brandon, the, uh, the wife, um, and, I, and I think it was a, a wonderful thing. But she was so nutty and mad and joyful and, and crazy and, and so on. It was a wonderful reaction to um, hard labour, yes. It's celebration day for me now. Why? I never wanted you to go in the first place, Les. All I wanted in life was you and your selfishness and your total lack of consideration for my feelings. <laughs> oh, Les, welcome back to me bosom. Oh, hell. <laughs> oh, dear. It's very like a lot of uh, recent comedy. Um, it, it's, it very, is. it's very surreal, I very think strange. It's modern. Mm. Uh, and, and it's very surreal, I think. I mean, the characters, uh, you know, it's just wonderful. Wonder worth seeing again, I think.
the thing you've become especially known for, which is your reaction shots, your facial oh, expressions, yeah. oh, probably. Um, which you are tremendously good at. How conscious are you of what your what oh, your I face don't. is doing? I'm you not don't. conscious. No, no. no it's but only, you've got a very expressive face, haven't you? Uh, well, I'm not. I'm, I don't think. I don't think I've got an expressive face. I've put on this expression. Mm. I, you know, whatever happens, happens. I, I don't know. I don't know what happens. I don't, can't tell you what happens. Well, no, but it's really interesting to people who don't act. Is that you're not? So it, it's not conscious. No, I'm not. I'm not. I don't think I'll. I'll look like that when I say that at all. I only do what comes instinctively. I don't know what I'm doing. And do you watch, because some actors don't like to watch themselves at all, but do you watch oh, yourself? Oh, yeah, on? I do, because I think I shouldn't have done that then. I should have waited another split second there. Oh, yeah, uh, criticise, yeah. Oh, think, right. Oh, no, I should have turned there, I mean, you know, things like that. Mm. And you say wait a split second because it's, it's famously Ooh. always said that ti timing is the key. Yeah, exactly. But, but that, that yeah. is just an instinct, is when to... Oh, yeah, yeah. Ab I, I, absolutely, I think... Uh, I could, I could have gone on another second longer there and, uh, you know, yes, I do uh, want to criticise um, and think I won't do that again. I, I won't, to, I won't, I'm closing my eyes there, what am I doing that for? You know, criticising myself, yeah. And northern comedy in particular, because we mm. have, I mean, at all, uh, a lot of yeah. the great comic writing, some people say all yeah. of it has come out of the north of yeah. England, but certainly yeah. Mike, Mike Lee, Peter Tinniswood, Alan Bennett is then the Alan next Bennett, crucial one for you. wonderful Alan Bennett, yes, because uh, I was lucky enough, of course, to be in his wonderful film, A Private, uh, a private fun Function. Private Function. Although you, um, this was an unusual uh, bit of casting, but you, you put a bit of pressure on him, didn't you? <laughs> well, because uh, um, um, I didn't know where he lived. <laughs> and, and so when I heard that he was, I thought, God, Alan Bennett, I've got to, got to say that to And so, um, yeah, I sent my son round uh, on his bike with a, a postcard. Please, Alan Bennett, will you come? Which I don't think he cast it, you know, really. I know, they have influence writers, but you must have asked him, haven't you, about this subsequently? <laughs> no. You've never asked him? No, I don't. No, <laughs> we, we, didn't, we didn't mention it. But I, I, thank God I did get, get it. it was, it's just wonderful to speak. When you, when you look at a piece of dialogue and you, can, you hear the character saying it, you know, that's when you want to do it. So, it, it, it doesn't happen every time. Sometimes dialogue's just dialogue to say, but sometimes it's magic. We've got a pig in the house. Do you understand, Mother? A pig. What sort of a pig? A pig, Mother, a proper pig. Do you want to put me in a hole? Oh, shut up! I didn't say anything. Dr Swaby put Mrs Beavers away. He asked her the name of the Prime Minister. She didn't know and he carted her off to Lowmore. He wants my room! Although private function, there isn't that much dialogue, is there? Because she's uh, oh no, no, silent. I don't. Mm. I I didn't speak much. Mm. No, I didn't. I, even um, just silly things like uh, I'd like a banana. What's this bananas? I could eat a banana. There are no bananas. There's a pig. There are no bananas. Gilbert, forget the bananas, love. There aren't any bananas, but there is a pig. And the thing I said about facial expressions, there's one particular shot which anyone who's ever seen a private function mm -hmm. and i've seen it more than once remembers which is when maggie smith is playing the <laughs> the uh, cinema yeah. organ and you mm. are sitting at her side and you do uh, you do a glance backwards uh, uh, yeah i look i look around at the audience <laughs> because i think i find it interesting and and the seat goes up mm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so we go up together mm. her playing like that and me looking around yes But that, that, that's one of the kind of looks I'm talking about. But that, talking that, that, about. that was just an instinctive... Oh, it's all yeah. in... Yes, it all is. Nothing is... Uh, yeah. I, I don't plan a, a, an expression. <laughs> whatever, uh, whatever is there comes out itself. You know, I don't, I don't plan it. I mentioned um, a scene from Private Function, which uh, we all remember, but there's one, um, you've got a still from it in your book, which never actually appeared in the final film because I think it was perhaps too bleak. It, it was which is you sitting, you sitting in, on the lavatory. It's in it, the book, It's yeah. in a preface mm. in, in, his, in the... Uh, uh, when he published the script, yeah. When he published the script, he put it in the preface 
that it was his favourite shot, but uh, it wasn't allowed. It was too sad. It was me sitting on the lavatory uh, and, and in the bath, a bleak northern bathroom, with a pig sitting dead in it. Mm. It, it's a sad picture. I felt so sorry for that pig, but it, it was, it was just a pig from a, we, we didn't kill the pig. We didn't kill the actress pig. You didn't so, kill the actress pig, you killed another pig, yeah. Because there's more felt than- sorry for it. There's more than one pig, I think. Uh, the actors uh, were uh, two pigs, two sisters called Betty. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, if, if one could scramble up the stairs better than the other, she got that uh -huh. shot. So, on, you know, yeah. The pigs were great, yeah. You then, um, another Adam Bennett script you did, which was less successful. Um, Enjoy. Enjoy, which was the stage play, which, mm. again, and I think someone did do it again recently, but it was perhaps too bleak for the time. It was done in it 1980. It was bleak. It was terribly bleak. Um, which just explained people didn't see it, it, it's a, it was, it's a, it's a, it's, um, it's so old dis people in Leeds. dismissive of, mm. of the old people, and so dismissive of them, uh, that... Um, I remember at the matinees, uh, when, when it's mostly pensioners there, uh, people were leaving in tears. It was too, it was too terrible, uh, which probably is quite true, you see, and, and probably to this day, you know, dismiss because you're old, mm. probably. Yeah, it, it, was, it became too sad. It had some marvellous moments in it. And it was terribly funny, but it was it was too sad, I think, yes. We also discovered from your book, when you write about Enjoy, that um, Alan Bennett, apart from being one of the great comic writers, yes. um, also makes exceedingly good cakes, apparently. Well, you see, what, what always amazes me is the fuss they make in West End theatres on the first night. I mean, the first night is slightly over the top with champagne and great big bouquets of flowers and oh uh, you, you, you know it, it goes over the top over the top over the top you know bigger and bigger and more theatrical and whatnot and and everybody's turning up with all these great big things of, of champagne and oh god knows what and what does alan turn up with a fruit cake you see for each <laughs> member of the cast which he's yeah. made himself yeah. And so you get a little <laughs> paper um, carrier bag uh, with a little fruitcake in it that he's made you. <laughs> Not a great big thing of champagne. It's lovely. It's, that is so lovely to have mm. that kind of attitude. Lovely. The um, Vicar of Dibley, which again I was watching episodes again, um, yeah. That, that's an example of the, the kind of role, again, um, yeah. a batty old lady in yeah. a hat. That's, um, batty old lady. Th th you were offered lots of those. Uh, yeah, they, they always seem to be batty old lady, um, um, which, which I like. I like. I like it very much. I would have liked something... I would have liked to have touched on something a bit wider, uh, more than I have, but I'm, I haven't. You were simply not offered them? No, I don't think I'm mm. offered them. I, I don't think people thought... Um, I only became conscious of it sometimes. I, I did a pinter uh, once. It was, it was for charity, so it only ran like a week. Uh, but it was at the Haymarket Theatre. It was a wonderful stage, a wonderful feel. And... Um, uh, it was called The Room. It's one of his early yeah. ones. And it was difficult. Mm. I found it very difficult. I found it hard to do. But then I felt I got it, and it was fantastic feeling. And I thought, I could have done more of this ilk. I regret uh, that I haven't had a, a wider range uh, uh, perhaps sinister, more sinister kind of thing I think I'd like to have done. But you've also done Samuel Beckett, um, Endgame you did. I did. And you appear on stage when you're in that to rise from the dustbin, but presumably yeah. you've, you've come from under the stage, have you? Well, I went because I'm 
always a bit wobbly. And uh, so I, I went and um, they were going to move the dustbin to the front of the stage. Often mother is at the back in a dustbin. So uh, I said, uh, oh, I don't think I can do it because uh, how will I, you know, I come... I, I said, I'm not, I'm not staying all night in a dustbin uh, uh, while uh, <laughs> they rant on, you know. Michael Gambon and Michael Lee Evans, Michael Gambon yeah. ranting on. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, so they said, oh, we cut a hole in the stage. <laughs> <laughs> cut a hole. So, I mean... So I said, oh, I don't think my voice will uh, reach up because it's very high theatre. So I tried it, you know, hickory dickory dock, the mouse runner, and the voice went up. So I hadn't got any more excuses. <laughs> and they did, they dug a hole and they put a hydraulic lift underneath <laughs> so that I could just come up for my, come up for my scene. Yeah, and they, made it, they yeah. made it so obvious and easy for me, I had to do it. That was my last one because I've grown old and tired and, and I, ca I really can't find this, the energy to do theatre, really. So that was my last one. The Vicar of Dibley, you had the experience that sometimes happens to actors yeah. in long-running TV shows, that they wrote you out of it. They did write me out of it, yes. Uh, I didn't want to be, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but I was. I, I felt it was a shame to lose that character because uh, people have loved that character of the dreadful cakes that she made. <laughs> Did he explain why you had to go? No. No, I just uh, was explained that uh, um, uh, I was going to receive a script which, um, which contained my death. <laughs> but I've had a few since then to contain my death. Well, I wondered about that because that is... A lot of people don't like to think about death at all or talk about it, but actors... No. Actors have to You've actually to act, act it, out it out all the time. Well, yes. the last five jobs I've had, I've died. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm up for any dying jobs. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the most notable was in the royal family, which yes. to, to watch her, her death in that Christmas special yes. is very upsetting for the audience. But are you able to separate it or do, do you find it upsetting to do that kind of scene? Uh, no, uh, the only reason I felt... Uh, upset uh, to do it was that if they did any more, which I think they're going to do... Uh, There's going to be a Christmas special, yeah. There is, but I won't be in it. That's That was the tragic thing. I said, I said when they sent me the script, I said, I love the script, but uh, if you do any more, I won't be in it, will I? So I had to sacrifice for the brilliance of that script, which it was mm -hmm. wonderful. Um, I had to sacrifice any... <laughs> Future it'll hurt me very much to see them do it. Looks, it, it feels improvised a lot of the time. I know. It, but it's not, though, People is it? think it yeah. is improvised. Not at all. Oh. Not in the least. Not in the slightest. You can't alter, you can't alter anything in it. Uh, it's it's, it's so terribly every, everything is written, is scripted? It, it, everything is scripted. Yes, it is. You just say it. Wonderful. But that... Um, it, it seems from watching it, I mean, that was an important role for you, that one. Terribly important and, and terribly happy. And, and you really feel, you know, when you're in there, you feel, you feel like a family. It, it, it wasn't, it, it, it was all lovely to be together and, and, and just to be on that sofa and we were practically all stuck together. It was usually a heat wave or something like that. And, and it, it, it was marvellous because it is filmed in such a way that you were on the set the whole time. You don't go off and come back and do your scene or anything like that. You just do your scene as it, as it comes to it. And, you know, I've leaned back many a time and just had a sleep. Between, which, which I like, I like. And now I like jobs like that. I like jobs either being in bed... Uh, as I was in Charlie in the chocolate factory, uh, or on a sofa. <laughs> <laughs> Your most recent major role, a lot of people will have seen, is Lark Rise yes. to Candleford, um, which is coming back uh, on it television, is. but you're not. No, I'm, fr I'm afraid I'm not. I'm afraid I died in the last <laughs> instalment at my request because uh, uh, I am getting old and tired and I can't sustain a thing. I can only do a shorter kind of uh, job. 
Uh, and that was rather a long one, really. That's Sadly, I had to ask to come out of that one. Because for people who have never been on one of these sets, it's um, cars yeah. arriving before dawn, 12-hour days. Yeah, 12-hour day, and, and lots of... Uh, 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 and it wasn't out of doors. It was in inside and everything. And the uh, you know it was um, exhausting. Really, it, it was exhausting. Um, I think some of the younger ones felt uh, tired by it. But uh, no, I had to. Uh, it was a shame because it was. Um, I, I think people enjoy it very much. Looking forward to the. I'm sure people are looking forward to the next <laughs> lot of instalments. You know book was published when you were 85 which that's is true it is, it's <laughs> yes, quite rare that's right and it, and it had yeah. your drawings it, uh, yes. in it. but again do you regret that that didn't you didn't do that earlier the uh, publishing or uh, no, writing? I don't reg- uh, no i don't regret that it, it, it was a wonderful thing to happen in my 80s um i i think what i regret more than anything is that i've necked lectured the art side of it because uh, when i was young and um I went to art school. Uh, uh, I did some interesting uh, things, but then my life developed uh, that I had to do all this work and whatnot, look after the kids, and, and I neglected it. So really, these drawings that I do, along with the um, writing, are um, are really only the remnants, mm. really, of what I think I could have done. So I regret that. But I, I, I'm terribly pleased that, that they, you know, want to uh, bother to use them. At least it means I'm not totally wasted whatever I had. Actors don't have to retire, because as you said, as long as your no. mind and voice stay, a lot of them yeah, keep going... Yes, as long going as you can to... <laughs> manage to get there. <laughs> yeah. or, you know, do, do, you want, do you want to keep on going as long as possible? Yes, uh, not a lot. Uh, I, I don't want to... Uh, I'm sick of getting up at six and all that kind of thing. If, if they let me get up, you know, uh, start later in the day and uh, have an easy time. <laughs> like to, little bits, little bits. And looking back at your life, which we've been talking about, there was a lot of unhappiness early yes. on and then yeah. quite a lot of good luck later on. But, yes. But when you look back, do you look on it as a happy life? No. I don't really. Uh, uh, I, I consider I've had too much struggle and too much loneliness uh, and, and too much rejection, really. And I'm so thankful uh, for the latter half of it that uh, it was. Um, I've been so lucky, very lucky, very lucky. Liz Smith, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can I draw you? You can, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody seen my uh, yellow pad? Is it just, is that the one? Oh, here, yeah. here it is. Um, it might not work. Don't worry, don't worry, just... Um... You won't like it. <laughs> we'll like it. That's all right. I like that. <laughs> oh, I like that. That's good. Will you accept that? Of course I will. No, it's a, it's a privilege. Thank you. <laughs> you have to sign it, though, then. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'll put you a little bit of hair at the side. Yeah, a little bit. I've probably spoiled it, you see. If you add things on, mm. you spoil it. I've spoiled it now. Oh, God, no. No, no, can I have it, though? Yeah, you can have it, uh, but it, I've ruined it with a bit of hair. Oh, that's all right. Thank you very much, Liz. Thank you. Coming up next tonight, we're drawing our exquisite cuisine season.